series on Sabbath and rest. So we'll be talking a little bit about that more throughout the service today. And we have a couple of really special musical meditations sent in by Abby Sperry that she has also put her own photography to. Um, so I hope you um, can enter into the spirit of worship and perhaps a more contemplative feel today. And many thanks uh, to Abby for those. And those are the bells. So as a reminder, after worship today, we are having our annual meeting uh, where we look back on 2020, give thanks for what has been, and also make some plans for 2021, most notably passing our budget and um, our series of nominations to church leadership positions. Um, a few other items of business to take to talk through as well. So I hope you'll join us for that immediately following worship. And then next week uh, on the 31st of January, we will have a special service on Sabbath play. Our um, formal worship time will be a bit shortened and then we will follow that with um, a time to play a game together, uh, a game that the missions ministry has created especially for us. So I hope you'll join us for that worship service. And then on February 7th, we'll uh, reconvene for a communion worship and also have guest speaker Mary Streeter with us. She has been with us before and thought that her um, attention to restorative practices um, and um, mindfulness might be a great addition to our Sabbath series. So she'll be joining us then. And as a reminder on February 8th, which is a Monday evening, all of you who are taking on leadership positions in the church for the coming year, that's our all ministries night. So we'll meet at 7 p.m. to organize ourselves for the coming year. Um, I will ask just, I, I'm getting a little bit of background noise on the line today. So um, if you if you get muted, no worries, you can just uh, unmute yourself, um, but, but please go ahead and mute while you're not speaking. Thank you. Um, all right, Super Bowl of Caring coming up. So I think Bonnie Belfield, would you like to make a special announcement about the peanut butter? Um. Um, yes, so there is one week left to go um, if you would like to donate peanut butter. Um, the middle school youth group is leading the charge and all the peanut butter will go to the Jericho Underhill food shelf. So a um, couple of different ways to get the peanut butter. Um, you can either purchase it yourself and drop it at the parsonage on the porch in the box. You can call, text me email me if you need me to come to your house to pick it up or three let me know if you would like me to shop for it um, i know i'm going to be at the jericho market tuesday morning if you would like to spend your money locally and then i'll probably be at price chopper later in the week so um, we'd like to finish this by midnight next sunday so i can count it all take a picture of it next monday morning week from tomorrow and get it over to the food shelf before the next disbursement. Thank you. Thanks and thanks to all who've already donated. We'll also be taking up a special collection next week that our missions ministry has designated for those in need of rental assistance in this time. So thank you for your giving in these, in these ways. Um, the new Underhill Village Neighborhood Group, formerly known as Jacob's Property, this week will be presenting to some of our immediate neighbors. We sent out letters um, to those um, property abutters and a bit beyond here up Route 15 to invite, to hear a presentation on where we are with the project. Of course, everyone in the church is welcome to come to that as well at our regular uh, church Zoom link on Tuesday night at seven. So wanted to make sure we all knew that that was going on. Give thanks again for the team as they continue to carry the work forward and also ask for your prayers as we uh, begin this more external process in talking about uh, the project and the plans for the land. So that will be on Tuesday. Day. And those, I believe, are our announcements for this morning. So having heard the bells, let us um, begin our worship with this prelude uh, written by Max Richter and played by Abigail Sperry.
Please join in the call to worship by reading the bolded text on mute. Gather this day in silence and hope. We wait for God's word for us. Let your hearts and spirits be open. God is our strength and salvation. Wait patiently for the Lord with willing hearts and spirits we wait for the Lord. Our opening hymn this morning is, O oh Jesus, I have promised. I invite you to sing along on mute at home, or if singing along by yourself is not what you'd like to do, you can of course read these lyrics out loud. Let us sing or speak together. Our psalm reading today comes from Psalm 62, and as we've been doing the past several weeks, uh, we have a response that comes with some hand motions. So I'm going to lead us in those a few times, and then Anne will lead us in the full psalm. All right, so our response for today is, my deliverance and glory depend on God. God is my strong rock. My refuge is in God. It's a long one. So here are the motions for us. And again, you can stay seated if you'd prefer. My deliverance and glory depend on God. So just arms out in front of you. My deliverance and glory depend on God. Arms up to the sky. God is my strong rock. Strong arms with fists. And then my refuge is in God. Hands folded over your heart. We'll do that a few times. So from the beginning, my deliverance and glory depend on God. <laughs> God is my strong rock, my refuge is in God. The cliffs are smacking each other a little bit. All right, we'll do it one more time. My deliverance and glory depends on God. God is my strong rock, my refuge is in God. Oh, I must find rest in God only, because my hope comes from God. Only God is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. 
My deliverance and glory depend on God. God is my strong rock. My refuge is in God. All you people, trust in God at all times. Pour out your hearts before God. God is our refuge. My deliverance, my deliverance and glory depend on God. God is my strong rock. My refuge is in God. Human beings are nothing but a breath. Human beings are nothing but lies. They do not even register on a scale. Taken all together, they are lighter than all breath. Don't trust in violence. Don't set false hopes in robbery. When wealth bears fruit, don't set your heart on it. My deliverance. My deliverance and glory depend on God. God is my strong rock. My refuge is in God. God has spoken one thing. Make it two things that I myself have heard that strength belongs to God and faithful love comes from you, my Lord, and that you will repay everyone according to their deeds. My deliverance, my deliverance and glory depend on God. God is my strong rock. My refuge is in God. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also and with, you. With, you. with you. With you. Also with you. With you. Good morning. 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 Great to see everyone today. Peace be with you. I heard the peanut butter and jelly song in there. That's a good one. <laughs> a good one. All right, let's get our little lights ready. We're going to sing our peace song for Epiphany this year, which is this little light of mine. As soon as I get that back on the screen. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Amen. That's and will you lead us in a prayer for illumination? Yes. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of a new reality, just now coming into view, we have come today to see and touch and know your presence here among us. Be with us as we listen for your call. Help us hear afresh the good news that power and steadfast love arise from you, our rock and our salvation. Amen. <coughs> the gospel today is a reading from, from Mark chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. After Jesus was arrested, no, let me start again. I'm sorry. <laughs> After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee announcing good news, saying, now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news. As Jesus passed alongside the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers, Simon and Andrew, throwing fishing nets into the sea for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, he said, 
and I'll show you how to fish for people. Right away, they left their nets and followed him. After going a little farther, he saw James and John, Zebedee's sons, in their boat repairing the fishing nets. At that very moment, he called them. They followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired workers. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. In our series on Sabbath and rest, which we began a few weeks ago, we have been reflecting on why keeping Sabbath, why setting aside some time as holy is so important. In the first week, we looked at two versions of the Ten Commandments and noticed a slight difference when it came to this fourth commandment. In Exodus, the commandment comes with this reminder. In six days, the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in it, and God rested on the seventh day. If even the creator of the universe took some time to rest, surely we humans might also lay down our labors once in a while. But the version in Deuteronomy gives another reason for Sabbath observance, and that is, remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God freed you from there. Sabbath is also a reminder of the freedom that God desires for God's children. Sabbath is both a matter of rest and liberation. Last week, we looked at how Sabbath can also serve as a teacher, guiding us to be more attuned to God's voice. We recalled that this kind of instruction is something we need our whole life long, that we don't have to observe the Sabbath perfectly to learn a thing or two, and that we're likely to find some surprises along the way. We looked at this through the story of Samuel and his teacher, Eli. But you may be asking by now, okay, but what does Sabbath actually look like, actually manifest as in our day? We no longer live in a time where there is a particular day of the week that our culture as a whole recognizes as a day of rest. Stores are open, activity is scheduled the whole week through. Sure, the rhythm is a little bit different on the weekends, perhaps with a greater emphasis on recreation, which we'll talk a little bit about next week. But a complete refrain from the business and the busyness of our lives is not something that we observe collectively at this point. We can bemoan it, we can celebrate it. Either way, it is how it is these days. Now, before we get too deep into how we might observe the Sabbath in our day, I wanted to pause and recognize that we individuals and families gathered here today experience time in very different ways. A lot of that difference is driven by life stage, as we will look at during Lent this year to everything there is a season, and we are not all in the same season. That is how it should be in the life of a congregation. We are in different ages and family arrangements. We have different challenges when it comes to our health or employment or finances, and the pandemic has likely exacerbated whatever previous relationship to time we had. If we had a lot of time on our hands before this, we may find we have even more now. If we were often pressed for time before the pandemic, that might be even more the case now. Or maybe this time has been a switch. Maybe you have moved from busy to idle or vice versa. But I'm guessing that for most of us, the rhythm of life has changed drastically since March and will likely change again significantly sometime this year. So I say this because it is a difficult moment and a difficult context in which to talk about making time or setting aside time for Sabbath. Our experiences are so different. And at the same time, Sabbath has as at its heart a few hallmarks that I hope will invite us each to think about how we set aside time that is restful, that is freeing, and that orients us toward God. The first of those hallmarks is that Sabbath is an exercise in refusal. In her book, An Altar in the World, Barbara Brown Taylor explores several spiritual practices and Sabbath comes in the chapter entitled the practice of saying no. 
She begins by talking about how glorious it can feel to say yes, especially in the big moments of life. Yes, I will marry you. Yes, I accept the job offer. Yes, I desire to be baptized. You can tell she was a pastor. It is often easier to look back and reflect with gratitude on the opportunities we did take. Remembering the no's might lead to some regrets. But it's not just the big no's that can prove to be a challenge. We hesitate in small ways too. Maybe we're afraid of missing out or worried about the way others will perceive us. Taylor gives these examples of some no's that we are not very likely to hear. No, I want to stay in tonight. Okay, that was pre-pandemic, but I think you get it. No, I have enough work for now. Or here's a good one. No, I have all the possessions I can take care of. These no's might jar us just as much as a refused marriage proposal. Isn't it rude to refuse an invitation, detrimental to one's career to admit to being at capacity and to confess that one already has enough stuff to take care of? Like, come on, new stuff is fun, exciting, and contributes to the economy. These just aren't refusals that we are accustomed to making. But saying no is necessary when it comes to Sabbath keeping. Abraham Joshua Heschel, whose book I shared last week and is up behind me now, writes this of the Jewish Sabbath observance. On the Sabbath, we especially care for the seed of eternity planted in the soul. Do you ever think about that? That in you lies the seed of eternity? He goes on, how else express glory in the presence of eternity if not by the silence of abstaining from noisy acts? There is something of the glory of God that is ever close, yet perpetually out of reach if we don't clear the way to take it in. So what is it exactly that we should say no to? This has, of course, been the subject of much debate over time. Ancient rabbis were so concerned in clearing the way for a day of devotion that that list of no's just kept growing and growing and growing. To paraphrase Heschel, it evolved to a level of observance that could be reached by certain exalted souls, but not so much by ordinary folk. Another attempt at defining Sabbath parameters came with what have been called blue laws in this country, rules about what can and can't or could and couldn't be done on a Sunday. This began with lengthy lists used by the Puritans, but evolved over time to focus primarily on commerce and specifically the sale of alcohol. They still exist today, like in Massachusetts, where you can buy alcohol on a Sunday, but only after 12 noon. A grocery store I often went to had grates that would descend from the ceiling over that portion of the market, lifting only at lunchtime on a Sunday. It's hard to imagine that this clear compromise observance <clears throat> has much impact either on those who wish to abstain or those who wish not to. But for a little while each week, there is this visible reminder that for some people at some point, it was important each week to voice a collective no to some things, to make room for something else. Let's listen for a moment to how Barbara Brown Taylor describes her very first experience of Sabbath. The first time I really tried this was the Sunday after my last Sunday as a parish minister. After more than 20 years of being in church most Sunday mornings, I found myself suddenly faced with a whole day at home alone. I could not go to the church I had just resigned from. I did not want to go to church anywhere else. I thought about going to the grocery store, but I live in a small town where someone was bound to report that I had been seen buying cold cuts on my first Sunday morning away from church. So I stayed home instead, where I confronted grave questions about my professional identity, my human worth, and my status before God. But that only lasted about an hour. After that, I went out on the front porch and said morning prayer with the birds. Then I read until lunchtime. Then I made an egg sandwich. 
Then I took a nap. By the time the sun went down, I realized that I had just observed my first true Sabbath in more than 20 years. In the years since then, I have made a practice of saying no for one whole day a week to work, to commerce, to the internet, to the car, to the voice in my head that is forever whispering more. One day each week, more God is the only thing on my list. Similar to Heschel's description of the rabbis and their evolving Sabbath practice, Taylor didn't begin with a long list of parameters of what Sabbath was and wasn't. One day facing some constraints not entirely of her choosing, she found herself in a moment of Sabbath. And over time, it became clear to her what she would have to say no to in order to experience both the rest and the freedom she felt that first day. Her list of no's grew to include not only the typical work and shopping, but also the internet and use of her car. Things that might seem to us particularly sacrificial. And yes, she too lives in a rural setting. Some of us may already have a sense of what belongs on the no list, what we need to refuse on regular occasion in order to open us up more to God. Maybe it's the news or our social media feeds. Maybe it's the piles of housework or home improvement projects or hardest yet of all, those internal voices telling us that we don't deserve time away from our worries and our stress, our loneliness, or our insecurities. Heschel says the Sabbath is no time for any activity that might dampen the spirit of joy. Even without a pandemic, that is a tall order. So we might need some help in figuring out both what we need to say no to and of course the other hallmark of Sabbath, what we say yes to, what it looks like to put more God on the list. For this discernment, I commend to you a practice called examine, that's spelled E-X-A-M-E-N. And though the word may seem a bit fancy, it is really a simple, intentional way to reflect every day, recalling where we felt closest to and furthest from God. And if that is not a question that resonates with you, there are a few more ways to phrase it. So I'm gonna take a moment to share my screen as we work through a couple examples of examine as found in the book, Sleeping with Bread. All right, you see in the screen, blue screen? Yeah, okay. So the question I started with is, where did I feel closest to God and where did I feel furthest from God? But you might also ask, for what moment today am I most grateful? Or for what moment today am I least grateful? Another pair is this, when did I give and receive the most love today? And it's opposite, when did I give and receive the least love today? few more options. When did I feel most alive today? And when did I feel life draining out of me? Or this last one, which is a bit lengthier. When today did I have the greatest sense of belonging? The greatest sense of belonging to myself, to others, to God, even to the universe? And where did I have the least sense of belonging? Finding our way toward good Sabbath practice can begin with these questions asked not just on particularly good days or particularly bad days, but every day. At the end of the day, as we lay down to rest, whether we are exhausted and have a very small window for prayer before we fall asleep, 
or whether it takes us a while. These questions can help us start to identify what during Sabbath time we need to say no to. All those things that drained us, that left us feeling disconnected, ungrateful, unloved. And then on the flip side, examine reminds us of what connected us, what brought us alive, what reminded us that we are loved with an everlasting love. And as we begin to discover what that is, then we can ask ourselves, how do we get more of that for our Sabbath time? Because remember, we are talking specifically about Sabbath here. We cannot root out all of life's toil and pain and suffering. Our job is not to permanently transcend our reality, turning away from everything that makes us uncomfortable. On the contrary, we expect to live in the middle of that six out of seven days. But God desires for us, perhaps even longs for us, to enter regularly into holy time that is for our rest and our freedom. And if we don't know where to start, I hope examine may prove a helpful roadmap. Now, you may have noticed that I did something radical today. I didn't preach from the Bible. Don't tell my preaching professor. But I have to say, those disciples and their boats have been rattling around in my head all week. The story of these two sets of brothers all embedded in their work and yet at the drop of a hat, ready to leave behind and follow Jesus. And with James and John, it is particularly poignant. Mark, who never wastes a word on anything, lets us know that they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired workers. Poor Zebedee. Now, I am not going to try to connect what happened on the shore that day with their Sabbath practice that I really can't speak at all about. But I can't help but notice that when the moment came, Peter, Andrew, James, and John all seemed to know pretty quickly where they would say no to their families, their livelihoods, all they ever knew, and where they would say yes to unknown adventures with Jesus. May our Sabbath observances, our no's and our yeses, prepare us too for the adventures God has in store. Amen. Amen. We have another beautiful meditation for us prepared by Abby Sperry with another one of her uh, pieces of photography. Let us prayerfully reflect together.
Again, we give thanks for Abby sharing her gifts of music and of photography today. At this point, we come together lifting our gifts before God and before one another, blessing them to ministry in this world. We give thanks for the giving that has continued strongly uh, through these past, what are we at now, 10 months <laughs> since we've been able to be together in person. Um, and giving is available online on our website, ucu.church, as well as through the mail, PO Box 265 in Underhill, Vermont. Um, and we ask a blessing on the givers and the gifts this day. Let us sing together our doxology, a song of praise as we offer our gifts. Please join me in the prayer of dedication while keeping your microphone on mute. May these gifts given to ministries of grace be a blessing to friends and strangers that the love of God may reach all of God's beloved. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today may feel a little out of place, Abide With Me, um, an, an old, old and good hymn is typically sung at the close of day in the evening, not on a bright summer, sunshiny morning. Not summer, not summer, bright winter, sunshiny day. However, the sentiment of this hymn, that God abides with us, is close to us, has a lot to do with the Sabbath that we are striving to keep, drawing near to that eternity placed within. So I invite us to sing a few verses this day of Abide With Me, even if evening isn't falling so fast this morning. Let us sing together.
I hope that this worship experience through the music, the words, the reflections on Sabbath are starting to clear some of the clouds so that you can reflect upon what Sabbath might look like for you, for your family, for your household in a time even like this one. That it might be time to revisit what it is we need to say no to and say yes to in order to draw near to God who has placed the spark of eternity even within us. It is good news. May we, may we find, seek, or build the time where God, more God, is the only thing on our list. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us this day and even evermore. Amen. Amen. <laughs>